Apple just released the brand new 13 and 15 inch M3 MacBook Air, finally completing the M3 MacBook lineup. And the only question that remains now is, which MacBook should you buy? Well, let's attempt to answer that question by going over the key differences between the M3 MacBook Air and the M3 MacBook Pro. And of course, my recommendation for specifications for most users, as well as how to find a good deal on a budget MacBook model. Now, I've already had a lot of experience with the M3 chip offered on these MacBook Pro models. And this is mostly a spec bump upgrade. So I think we can make a lot of fair assumptions on how the Air will stack up overall in this lineup. So let's look at the MacBook Air lineup because this is the first place you should look. The MacBook Air checks a lot of boxes on what makes a great laptop. It's slim, it's lightweight, it has great battery life, a good keyboard, an excellent trackpad, amazing build quality, a good display, and it's capable for so many use cases is all at a really good price point. And even though the M3 Air is the new laptop, we are looking at Apple's entire MacBook lineup. And Apple's decision to keep the older M2 MacBook Air in the lineup deserves to be recognized because this starts at just $999, which is a fantastic deal, especially when you consider that there aren't too many new features on the new M3 models. So if you're on a strict budget, you should really start here. But my advice to you right now is that if you are in the market for an older M2 MacBook Air, you should shop around. Apple's website may not be the best place to buy this laptop, and I predict that in the coming weeks and months, you will be able to find the older M2 MacBook Air for a cheaper price point on third-party websites like Best Buy and Amazon. I'll leave links in the description below if I find any good deals, but I imagine we will see this discounted similarly to the older M1 MacBook Air, and you should see price points at around $800 to maybe even as low as $750, and that laptop, for that price is an insane value. And if you can't wait for those price cuts maybe coming, uh, definitely check out Apple's refurbished store. I already spotted the M2 MacBook Air for just $850. It is used, but Apple refurbished is basically like brand new anyway, so give it a shot. But let's not get distracted here. We're really talking about the new M3 lineup, right? And the M3 MacBook Air, it's not a bad laptop. Just don't expect any major discounts soon. But to say it's not a fair price point would be wrong. It is a fair price point. And for only $100 more on retail compared to that M2 MacBook Air, there's some features on it that might make it really worth it. First of all, it has an M3 chip, which will be more powerful. Apple says it is 1.4 times more powerful than the current M2 MacBook Air. And with the M3 chip, it will also likely be supported longer with macOS updates. Also, the new M3 chip brings along with it faster Wi-Fi 6E for networking, but by far the biggest feature the M3 enables is support for two external displays with the MacBook Air lid closed. So this is interesting. Apple has yet to natively support two external displays on the MacBooks with the base level M1 and M2 chips. This is the first time a base level M series chip can drive two external displays up to 5K at 60 Hertz. The catch here is that, yeah, the MacBook lid has to be closed. MKBHD had some hands-on time with this laptop, and he says that means that when you open the MacBook lid, the second display connected to it automatically turns off. This means that if you want to utilize two external monitors, you need to make sure you have a separate keyboard and mouse, which kind of does stink because sometimes I like to use my laptop open like this connected to a display so I can already use the built-in keyboard and trackpad, which I guess just isn't going to be possible on the MacBook Air. It would, it would be cool to see a software update where maybe you could like disable the display and then also still use the keyboard and trackpad, but I'm just going off the knowledge we have now. Apparently, uh, that's not possible. Sorry. Didn't mean to disappoint y'all. Don't yell at me, I'm just the messenger. And don't worry, if you purchased an M3 MacBook Pro, even though this feature wasn't out when Apple released this laptop, Apple has released a statement saying that they will be updating this with a softer update to include this new dual monitor feature. That's good because, you know, two hours ago I was about to record this video and I was about to be all the rage. You were about to see Greg unleashed. You were about to see Greg like you've never seen him before angry, upset, and you've never seen him like that. Except that one time when Taco Bell got my coffee order wrong and they put sugar in it and I said, I don't want sugar in my coffee and then I had them remake the order and then they put sugar in it again. And then I had them remake it one more time and they still put sugar in it. Taco Bell, coffee isn't even that great, but simple instructions like that, you really got that wrong. 
Now the price of an M3 Air starts at $1,100. It's a good deal, but just be made aware, this base level version comes with a weaker M3 chip. It has two GPU cores disabled. So you need to spend $100 more for the 10 core GPU model. For $100, it doesn't really seem like a good deal. And then on top of that, if you either upgrade the memory or the storage on the M3 MacBook Air to any other configuration, it will literally throw in that higher tiered 10 core GPU M3 chip for free. So yeah, just do that instead of upgrading the chip and then keeping the base storage. I don't know who the heck is doing that. And again, it only comes with 256 gigabytes of base storage and it likely suffers the same problem as the previous M2 models where the 256 gigabyte base storage option includes a slower SSD. So probably around 1500 read and write speeds. We'll see if that's true, but it probably is. Now, this wasn't the only MacBook update in the lineup today because we also got I didn't mean to drop it. A new 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. That's right, this was the 15 inch version the whole time. Bet you didn't know that. Gotta brush up on your size dimensions for these MacBooks. But yeah, the, the 15 inch MacBook Air, all you need to know about that is that it's basically the same laptop as the 13 inch, except it starts at $1,300. It does come with the full 10 core GPU as standard, but still just has 256 gigabytes of base storage. And of course, obviously it's a bigger laptop. It has a bigger 15.3 inch display. So if you want a MacBook Air with a bigger display, this one's for you. It's kind of nice. Also, uh, another thing with the 15 inch, and I wouldn't necessarily base my entire purchasing decision on this because it's not like the biggest difference in the world, but because both of the MacBook Air designs are fanless and because the 15 inch is a bigger laptop, it will perform a little better with sustained CPU and GPU workloads because this bigger body helps dissipate some heat a tad bit better. So if you really wanna eke out the maximum performance on an Air, considered the 15 inch, but again, it's probably not gonna be like the biggest difference in the world. If you really want performance, you might wanna get something else. We'll talk about that in a second. Just, just let me finish this. So who should buy the MacBook Air? Should it be you? Well, this laptop is for anyone that wants to focus on a silent design, something that's thin enough to slip into a bag, and even the 15 inch version is super slim, and it's lightweight enough to carry around with you. It's also a very, very capable laptop, and it can honestly fit most people's needs for a laptop. It is really great. Despite that, there are some weaknesses around the MacBook Air. It has limited port options, no cooling for sustained performance or heavy workloads, and while its display and speaker are good, they aren't as great as they could be. If these weaknesses sound like major problems to you, Shut up! What have you done with your life? Judging the MacBook Air like some Windows user? No, no, probably even worse. You're probably a Linux user. Now I would end the video here, but there are some other options besides the Air. The Air's weaknesses bothered you and you want to upgrade this experience, take a look at the M3 MacBook Pro. This base level version comes with a 14 inch display, so it sits in between the size of the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Air, but it is heavier than the 13 and 15 inch Air. Still, this is a very portable laptop and that extra thickness affords the Pro more battery life and some more ports. It has the same two USB-C ports and MagSafe charger and headphone jack as the Air, but it also gains an HDMI port for connecting to displays and televisions, and it has an SD card slot, which makes it easier to use with a compatible camera. On top of that, the display is outstanding. It is a mini LED display, which has 10,000 backlit LEDs that can dim zones, allowing the MacBook Pro to get an impressive million to one contrast ratio for deeper black levels. And its normal display can reach up to 600 nits of brightness versus the Air's 500 nits, as well as get up to 1600 nits of peak brightness when watching HDR content. To make it even more impressive, the display can run at 120 hertz. Pro motion, baby and it just looks a lot smoother than the 60 hertz display found on the MacBook Air. You've heard this a million times when people are talking about the pro iPhones and the normal iPhones, right? It's a nice display. It's great. Uh, faster refresh rate's great. It's not, it's, not, it's not necessary, but it's nice to have. It's nice to have. A lot of the features on the MacBook Pro aren't necessary, but they're nice to have. And even though the M3 MacBook Pro has the same chip option as the MacBook Air, it will perform better for intensive tasks because of that fan. It goes a long way. 
And while the M3 MacBook Pro starts at $1,600, you need to remember it does come with the full 10 core GPU and it starts at 512 gigabytes of base storage. If you spec a 15 inch Air the same way, it's only a hundred dollar difference between these laptops. So yeah, it, it might be a hard choice, especially if you're strapped for cash, but if you value display, if you value speakers, more ports, better performance, a bit of a sacrifice to weight and thickness if you don't mind that, and again, if you can afford that additional premium, I would say the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it's well worth the upgrade for those that value these features. And if you really want the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro, but that cost sounds way too damn high, consider Apple's refurbished store. These Macs may be used, but Apple again, does a great job refurbishing them and they basically look new out of the box. Apple is selling the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro for $300. I wish that was the case. They're selling it for $1,300. Apple is selling the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro for $1,350 for that price point. The M3 MacBook Pro is a no brainer over the air, but I get it. Not everyone wants to buy a refurbished laptop with someone's you know, greasy hands all over it. Heck, it could be my laptop that I sent back to Apple or something like that, right? It could, it could have all this grease all over it. You don't want Greg germs, or honestly, even if you wanted the Greg germs, I mean, yeah, people watch this video and they're like, I wanna get Greg's laptop. You know, it might not be available. The, the, the refurbished store might sell out. So I, I do like to recommend refurbished products because they usually are a good deal but they're not always like the most reliable recommendation if Apple runs out of stock on them. So you just gotta consider your options. If it's there and available and you don't mind it, go get it. But sometimes you'll check the store and it's like, oh, there's no options here for me, so what do I do? And, and in that case, you just gotta go new. All right, if you need even more power, more ports, better external display support, then you should move up to the 14 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro. That's a chip upgrade, but it does come with other things too. So I won't bore you with too many details. Obviously the M3 Pro variant has a more powerful CPU and GPU than the base M3 version. And you can spec this out pretty crazy, starting with the M3 Pro and then all the way up to an M3 Max chip with up to eight terabytes of storage and up to 128 gigabytes of memory on a laptop. But let's kind of focus more on this base model for $2,000. That's where most people are gonna be like spending for this machine. Most people are not spending $7,000 on a laptop. Most people are not dumb like me. Most people are smart. So listen, this base model is faster. It comes with 18 gigabytes of memory as standard out of the box. So it's a really well equipped machine for multitasking or for using more intensive apps that require more memory like video or photo editing apps. It can support two external displays at once on the M3 Pro with the MacBook Pro lid open. So it's kind of like you have three external displays and you can still utilize the keyboard and trackpad on the MacBook Pro when doing this. And if you want even more external display support, upgrade it to the M3 Max for three full external displays. For $2,000, this base model is probably the default choice for professionals using this laptop, especially if you are a pro user starting out. I think it's a better machine and you'll see a big power jump stepping up to the M3 Pro and you'll see an even bigger jump stepping up to the M3 Max chip. Obviously though, if you think this 14 inch laptop is too small or you really plan to upgrade this laptop with the top of the line specs, you should look at uh, the 16 inch M3 MacBook Pro. This starts at $2,500 and it can be equipped with the same specs as the 14 inch, but obviously it has a bigger 16 inch display and it's also the heaviest laptop in Apple's lineup, weighing up to 4.8 pounds. And trust me, as someone that is using this laptop daily, it is hard to get used to carrying around all that extra weight and size when you are used to the smaller models. But besides the bigger display, the 16 inch also has slightly better sounding speakers than the 14 inch model. And you will actually notice better performance and less fan noise if you are planning to upgrade this to the M3 Max model. On the 16 inch, you not only have the bigger body like the 15 inch to help with heat dissipation, but you also have larger fans and better cooling in the machine overall. So on top of it having a bigger display, it can also edge out the 14 inch model in performance. So listen, this is not rocket science. Don't make it too complicated. Look at your budget and the features you need and pick from there. There's no right or wrong answer to any of this. I can make a solid buy case for every laptop in Apple's lineup. The only thing you really need to look out for is how to spec these laptops. If you're an entry level user, 
eight gigabytes of memory is probably fine. But if you plan to use a bunch of Safari or Chrome tabs and have some you know, high demanding applications open like Final Cut Pro or Photoshop, well, then you should probably step up to 16 gigabytes of memory if you can afford it on the MacBook Air model. And then at the same time with storage, 256 gigabytes, it's pretty low, right? And upgrading to 512, it'll net you a lot more local storage that you can use on device. However, at least with storage, you can always buy an external drive to add more storage, even though it might be kind of a pain compared to just using a larger internal drive, but still, you can still add storage at the end of the day. With memory, you're kind of stuck with it. So if you pick an eight gigabyte machine and it doesn't work well for you, it doesn't matter how much you save up, it's just gonna, you know, be a machine that doesn't perform right for you, and that's not good. So I would say if you have a little bit of money to spare, if you need to make some upgrades, start with memory first and then go to storage second. That is my top recommendation for specking these things out. As for chip upgrades, moving over from the M3 MacBook Pro to the M3 Pro variant or the Max variant, again, if you know you already use applications that require more CPU and GPU power, then I guess prioritize these upgrades. If you need more CPU, get an M3 Pro. If you need even more CPU performance, but especially more GPU performance, then upgrade to the M3 Max if your budget allows it. If you don't think you need that extra power, then you shouldn't waste money upgrading it because single core performance on all M3 Macs are the same. Most apps utilize single core performance. So if you aren't taxing the system, it's likely that the M3 Air will feel about the same in general performance use compared to Apple's most powerful M3 Macs. Things like opening up applications or just browsing through Safari, watching video, going through spreadsheets, all that basic stuff that basic users do. I wouldn't know I'm not a basic user. I'm a pro user. I'm not a basic, I don't wanna say the word. I'm not basic though. But if you are basic, you'll be fine. I'm not, I'm not insulting you. It's okay to be basic. If you don't got, Dragon Ball Z drip like me. You know, it's not everyone can walk around in uh, Greg's shoes all day. Very, very few people can handle that pressure. Finally, if you're looking at these Macs and trying to find it at a better price, there are some things that you can do. If you're a student, check out Apple's education store where you can find the MacBook Air for as low as $900 and get discounts on every other Mac that Apple sells. If you're not a student, don't do that. That's dishonest. Also again, check out Apple's refurbished store where I currently see the M2 MacBook Air being sold for $850 and the M3 MacBook Pro for $1,350. Both excellent price points on these machines. Finally, for older Macs, make sure you also check out third-party sites like Best Buy or Amazon. Chances are you can find something like an M2 Air or even the M3 MacBook Air and Pro, sometimes cheaper than Apple sells on their own website. But basically, that's everything you need to know before you buy a new MacBook. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I try to make it straightforward, which is always a problem when dealing with so many different sizes and configurations. And obviously you give general advice, but sometimes people want very specific advice, but I tried to be general to make it easy. And I hoped it, I hope it helped. So if it did, give me a like, if it helped you. If it didn't, um, I'm sorry, but hey, you made it to the end of the video. So I guess you found it entertaining, hopefully. And if you did, sub for more and I'll see you in the next one.